Hey, there we go. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Today is October 23rd, 2018. My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome back to my live coding stream. We're going to write a little bit of code today. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, wow, that is blue. Check out my new C-sharp hat, huh? Look at that. Kapow! Yeah, Matt. Woo! I'm wearing my Microsoft shirt, and of course, it's got a green spot there that's disappearing, and it looks like I've got a hole in my chest. Oh, no! Um, that's okay. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. We're going to continue our work today with Ubuntu. We're going to write a little bit of code on CoreWiki, and we've got some feedback from our friends on the ASP.NET team. I am excited to take a look at that, to work with it, and, and see what we can learn from the issues that we had last time uh, and the feedback that they gave us. Let's take a look over at the chat room. Uh, hey, Rambling Geek. Good afternoon. Oh, at home taking care of your boy. Hope everything's okay with you and yours. Uh, Alfonso's here. Good morning. Hey, Chef Brent. VTMR and C Sharp Dan. Tagaron One. Good afternoon. And Matt the Dev. Hey, good morning. Turrican. Shy Sharp. Franklin89. Hello, hello. And Justin. Uh, it is super blue. It is really blue. It's, I got a little bit of color correction there so that it works great with the green screen. So I think it works fantastic. C, super C-sharp man. I kind of agree. <laughs> My retinas. All right, all right, all right. Uh, why not the blue screen today? Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, Jezreelites. Hey, good morning. Shift kit. Anyone still use SQL Metal as an ORM? I don't know. Oh, just a school break. Oh, terrific. Glad to hear it's nothing, nothing difficult going on there. All right. Let's get some music playing here in the background. Um, of course, we're going to play some music code by. This is music that gets you in the flow, gets you in the groove, ready to go. Today, I think we're going to play a little purple. It's a little bit slow to start. It's scientifically engineered to get you in the flow, to get you focused. Let's see there. Use the purple screen. I don't have a purple screen. It doesn't work like that. Let's see here. I want to keep my sound up a little bit. Uh, let me flip over to my sound on the stream deck. Let's see here. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping. There we go. So we're getting ready for more work on Ubuntu. I've got my penguin breaking through. We crossed 4,000 followers over the weekend, if you didn't catch it. Uh, or was it Friday? I think it was Friday. Thursday into Friday. And we're at 4030 right now. I am so thankful for all of you who have decided to join us to tune in, to click that follow button. I'm, I'm truly flattered by that number. And if we want to do the rainbow beard at the Dev Intersection event, we need to get to 5,000 in five weeks. Can we do it a, thousand, a, a couple hundred, 200 a week, right? Math? I use a calculator now. So we will, we will push for that rainbow beard, absolutely. Uh, hey, Fretya and Wintermute. Good morning. Yes, the rainbow beard. Um, so we're going to push for that, and that's going to be at... Right, let me make sure I do a little bit here. Dev Intersection in Las Vegas. There we go. Uh, you'll see, there it is in the corner also. Big conference, December 3 through 6 at the MGM Grand. I'll be there. Oh yeah, and I'll be streaming there. I have a full day workshop I'll be teaching on a ASP.NET Core. It's down here somewhere, I promise. There it is. Get started building a web application. If you haven't, most of the folks that are here, you probably already know this stuff, but if you want to get hands-on, if you want to ask questions, have, have me there in person. Check out full day workshop on Monday before the event. I think there's even a code you can use. If you use the code FRITZ, you can get a couple bucks off. 
I'm feeling great, and I hope you are too. Um, let's see here. Um, but I do have a couple sessions, and I think you're going to be happy when you see what the sessions are. .NET Framework Improvements Tips and Tricks. That's nice, but I think you're going to be interested in this second one. IoT Live Pair Programming with our friend Suze Hinton, the, the Noop Cat. We're going to have a great time. We're going to stream this. It's going to be live from the stage, uh, and I think it's Thursday or Friday during the event is when the schedule has us. So you'll be able to tune in and watch us from here. But if you want to be able to ask us questions in person, we're not going to be taking too many questions from online. But if you want to be there, ask questions, interact with both of us, you got to check out the event in Las Vegas. Now, I have a timer set on my watch. There is a, a specific time that I'm allowed to make this announcement. I do have an announcement to share, and we're going to talk about that in about an hour and a half. At 11.45 Eastern, we'll share the, the details about what's going down. Um, 24.25 new follower each day until December 1st. There we go. During Matt's stand-up. Sorry about that. Hey, Alfonso. Thanks so much for the subscription. I really appreciate you using your Twitch Prime here. And uh, we'll make a donation to Girl Develop It. Thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, all right. Let's take a look. And of course, oh, Alfonso, you're going to get the, the C-Sharp bot emote. And you're also... Um, this is your first time, so you're going to get it. The purple mug. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks so much for your help. All right. So, does Twitch Prime auto renew? No. You have to come through each month and click uh, on which channel you want to um, to subscribe to. But Twitch Prime re auto renews as uh, um, with your Amazon account if you have those connected. All right. Let's take a look. We we got a pull request from our friends on the ASP.NET Core team. And I was thrilled to see this after we ran into that little bit of an issue last time around the versions of our SDK. So we had we saw this message come through on our Core Wiki repository. Core Wiki, of course, is a content management system. It's a wiki that we're building using C Sharp, using ASP.NET. And we get this message. And that's a kind of a scary message. Found a security vulnerability in one of your dependencies, you know? Ah, what's going on there? Hey, all. Hey, uh, VSU. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, what do we do about this? And we tried updating our project to the correct version of ASP.NET Core, and we ran into a bit of a problem. It was tricky for us to resolve, and we ended up rolling back. And it was a little bit painful. So check this out. We, we sent a message over to our friends in the ASP.NET Core uh, repositories. And Dan Roth, one of the program managers on the team, wrote back and said, well, here's some fixes that you can go through and use. I said, Dan, is that all we need to do? He said, this is it. I just apply this, it, it just works. Yeah, that's it. And then? I have to rebuild, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then? I, I'll have to pull new versions of packages, right? And then? I'll, I'll have to clean the folders, right? Um, well, I'm on Linux, so I'm going to want to build it so that it works on Linux, right? But if I use a shared configuration, it, it should just work everywhere. And then? Um, well, I'll push my changes back into source control. I'll merge this in, and it'll be okay, right? And then? Well, uh, there's a second pull request. Well, let's look at the other pull request. So we want to use an implicit version, um, right? So instead of saying version 212 here, if we just let it go here, it'll slide with it. Right, Dan? And then? Um, as new versions are released, we'll get the correct version, right? And then? 
well, I should check the other. Let me check the other pull request. Um, so if I check the other pull request, um, so it says use the latest SDK version. And what Dan had for us, he didn't even give us a description here. Thanks, Dan. Um, but he modified our global JSON file. And, and global JSON. Woohoo, three months. I'm going to pause that. Thanks so much, Brent, for the, for the resubscription. Absolutely. Three months in a row. That's awesome. And we will make a contribution to Girl Develop It for that. Um, but we changed this and it, de it declares to the SDK which version you should be using. Well, when new versions of the SDK comes out and if we install them, it doesn't matter. It'll still use this same version that, that Dan's recommending we use here, the 21403. Well, and then I'll I'll need to install that latest version, and it'll it'll be okay. So I think I think we merge in these two pull requests. I think we get the correct version of the SDK downloaded and installed on my machine. And then, well, I'll rebuild and make sure everything works at that point. And then. No more end thens. We've got it. We've got it. And then, and no more. We, we're done with the end thens. And then. Okay, that's enough. No more and then. And then? So this is what we're doing, okay? We're gonna merge all these things in. And it's gonna be good. And our application will work, and we'll get rid of that... that security warning. Sound good? And then? And then everybody in the chat room will be happy. I have ten of them. Thank you, Brave Cobra. <laughs> There, I don't have any more end thens. There's, there's nothing more after that. And then? Okay, that's enough with the end thens. And then? That's, okay. Moving on. Was that too much? Did, please stop. Please stop. Right. Nice hat. It's my eight-month Ubuntu anniversary. Hey, thank you, Mr. Magoo. I appreciate you using your Twitch Prime. Eight months, can you believe it? Yes, we'll make another donation to Girl Develop It. Thank you so much for your support, Mr. Magoo. All right, so let's do this. So I'm gonna merge in these couple of changes that Dan has for us. They look, they look pretty good because we do have green checks here. So it's already been downloaded and, and compiled here using uh, Azure DevOps and the pipelines, okay? Um, let's see. Brave Cobra says, please continue. Oh. Throw me a freaking bone here. Okay, we're, we're getting there. So let's, uh, let's merge what Dan has for us here. Hey, BP Foster 85, thank you for the follow. The movie didn't drag it out that far. No, he argued. He argued a bit. Uh, let's see. Thanks for getting us on the right track with this update. There we go. And I'll commit that. Um, and we'll go over to the other pull request to say use the latest SDK version. And we'll merge this one as well. There it goes. Uh, thanks for the update. All right. So we got that one done. And, we'll, and I'm going to have to pull down the changes here locally. And I'm going to have to check the version of the .NET command line that I have here, right? .NET version. And I do have 21403 installed. I downloaded the latest one. Uh, let's zoom in on that, right? We'd like it a little bit bigger, right? I'm... Why isn't... I'm trying to zoom out. Control... Yeah, there we go. Um, all right, so let me go to Dev Core Wiki. Uh, oh, silly me. There we go. And I will pull in those changes. Um, already up to date. What? How's that work? Because we just merged it into Dev. How did I already get the latest changes?
Because it clearly didn't merge and pull that. Teamwork and collaboration. Absolutely. Uh, hey, C Sharp Fritz says, Hamadi, hello, hello. Wrong branch. No, I'm on... Uh, what branch am I on? I'm on first start. All right. So let me check out dev. Yeah, yeah. Let's get that update. There we go. And let me go back over... And then? Over to project first start. There we go. I'll merge dev over so that those changes Dan gave us are now in this branch. And then? Um, well, I'll have to update the commit message. That's fine. Merge commit message, and I will log in for my key. Oh. Ah, fat fingered it. Nope, did it again. I'm going to save that so I don't have to keep keying it in. Um, yeah. That key. There we go. All right. So we got that all unlocked and, and merged in. And then? Well, right. I'm on the right branch now, aren't I? Yeah, project first start. So we'll work on our first start operations now. And let's actually check to make sure that uh, the application is compiling and working. Uh, so I will .NET watch run. And then? It'll build the application, and whenever there's a change, it'll rebuild it. So we'll let that go. Uh, Mr. Magoo, analyzing keystroke sounds to decipher passphrase. Please wait. And then? And then you're not going to figure out my password. There we go. I think we've got it. Looking better. There we go. Launch settings. Feels good. Awesome. There we go. Listening on localhost 8081. Hold down control and click so it opens over here. And we're already in the startup mode. This is where I want to be when I first launch the application, right? When I first install CoreWiki. And I think this is where we're going to jump off. This is where we're going to start working on our application today. So look at that. Look at that, Brave Cobra. We're, what, 20 minutes in? Already done the pull requests. Got the application running. Focus now on getting, getting the task done, doing the thing. I feel pretty good about that. Um, and the Twitch website... The JavaScript for the chat room doesn't work on the panel. Nice. Ooh. Hello. Hello, hello. I just refreshed the Twitch dashboard here as a broadcaster. Chef Brent, you may see this. Um, there's now an option to poll the audience a boost option here, but I still can't get my chat to launch. Uh, that's interesting. That's extensions. Amazon Blacksmith. I don't know what that is. Wow. New features. Okay. Uh, would you want us to open an issue for those async related warnings? Let's go back. Wrong one. Let me go back in here. The async related warnings that Wintermute is referring to is right here. Articles DB search engine, the async method lacks a weight. Application DB context, slug history DAO added date time is incomplete. Yeah, we should probably clean up these warnings. Sure. That's fine if we wanna open issues for that. If somebody wants to take those issues, that's okay too. I'm always open to, to having folks contribute to the project. So this is where, we're, where we wanted to jump off. We wanted to have the ability to configure our application from the get-go so that we don't have folks having to remember what the administrator username is. So we don't have a default user that everybody has to use when they first install CoreWiki. By having this startup experience, it's going to be pretty easy for folks to just get some default settings if, it if they'd like or 
to start working and being productive using the wiki features. All right. I am just taking a quick, quick poke around. Oh, look at this. Our friend, the boss, Scott Hunter, says uh, he's still owed a fancy .NET hat. Uh, hope, hope it comes over before we ship .NET Core 3. Well, Scott, if you're watching... I'm sorry. Scott! If you're watching, um, I'll be happy to get another one of these made with uh, either the .NET bot or something on it. Always eager to to get cool hats made. And uh, I have a one-off embroidery shop at the local shopping mall that I'm able to take uh, images into and they and they make cool hats. Um, if you... I had some people on Twitter say, where do I get one? I'd love to get a hat like that. And I, I was th actually thinking about getting some made for the folks on the C Sharp team. Let me know if you're interested and we'll see if, if I can make up a bunch of it. Build failed on the dev branch. Oh no. Oh no. Let me take a quick peek over there. Let's, let's open a new tab. Where is it? New tab. Um, all right. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh, if I check out dev here. Ah, oh, that's fine. Git check out dev. This should rebuild because it saw changes. There we go. The watch is running. Tick, 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 tick. Come on. Do it! Build already. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Wow. That's pretty ugly. But it ran fine. Hmm. Still need to get a Chef Brent hat made. That's a cool idea, too. Um, <laughs> log build event. This is during the bundle. In the bundler minifier. Interesting. Interesting. Um, let's get rid of bin and obj and .NET build and see if see if cleaning it like that helps us out at all. Restoring, good. Building, looking better. There, I think we got it. Build succeeded. So, um, who was that there? I agree, Bra Brave Cobra. It would be cool to get the active branch on the console. Hey, good afternoon, Ancient Coder. Um, so C Sharp Dan, I, I removed the obj and bin folders so that it re-restored everything and it looks, it looks like it's working fine on my machine. Let me know if you're still having a problem. All right, I'm going to go back over to the project branch that we were working on and I'm going to .NET watch run again uh, there we go I thought I heard something there it was mobilize cloud thanks so much for the follow I appreciate you joining it failed on the Azure pipeline uh, it did I'm on the dev branch. Oh. That's interesting. It's that same error. Look at that. It's the 212 here. You know what? It, good catch, C Sharp Dan. Thanks so much for finding that. Um, let's take a quick look here and see if we can force it to. Right, there's a thing in here that lets us force. Yeah, let's force it clean. Um, let's see. Hang on. Tag sources, no. Report build status, no, 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 no. Yeah, let's. Do, 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 do. 
let's uh, just keep an eye on that build and see if it goes. Fantastic. Um, how you doing, Ancient Encoder? Good to see you. Um, all right, let's go back over to this. So what I what I'd like to do. What I'd like to do with the build process here, with the startup, is um, right now the name of the wiki doesn't actually go anywhere. I don't have anywhere to go with that. I I don't have a um, a way for you to upload and swap out the logo. While that's very cool, and I'd like to support it. For right now, I'm going to yank this field because I don't have any way to to change that. Um, you know, I should open Visual Studio Code. That's better. All right. Take a quick peek over here, see how that's doing. All right, manual build. Come on. Come on. All right, still working on the restore. All right, we'll let that run for a little bit. Um, so inside, for this first start component, we're making this a Razor, uh, a Razor library. Um, I'm, I don't want the update. Now this Razor class library allows us to put um, uh, our templates inside of another project, and it's in encapsulated in what's called an area. That way, it's one place, isolated, and particularly for this, where it's only going to really run at startup, it's away from the rest of the project. Uh, this should be enough at least to show you the branch. Add branch, get branch name to bash prompt. All right, let me circle back to that in just a second. For right now, I'm going to remove the name your wiki field here. Um, and I'm going to use the control K, control C hotkey just to comment that out. There it goes. It is restarting the music. Have a good one, Matt. Thanks for stopping in. Um, okay. Um, I've commented that out. Let me make sure when that's posted back. So right now I don't have a post to receive it just yet. I do have this first start configuration. And if I look at that, right now it has wiki name and admin username. It's not a problem if I have an extra field in there, so I'm okay. Would be nice if the chat pot could post a failed build in chat. Um, Stelzy. Right, my let me make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Stelzy seventy nine. Um, that's a neat idea. For and you're and you're referring to when DevOps has a failed build. Do me a favor, open an issue in the Fritz Stream Tools repository, and um, I think that's something that we can build pretty easily. Yeah, let's. Drop an entry in there, and we'll we'll talk about it in a maybe at some point in the next week. We can talk about that um, later this week. I'm at TwitchCon, so Thursday, Friday, and Saturday I will not be broadcasting. But if you keep an eye on my Twitter, if you keep an eye on Discord, I'll drop a message in there if I pop up on anybody else's stream. That and Discord and Slack, whatever collaboration tool. Yeah, that's a good idea. Brad Gibbs asks, any advice for someone new to coding and programming? I've been doing Code Academy, trying to help self-teach front-end development. What a lot of folks look for, yeah, look at that, it still failed. And it's that same error. A lot of folks who are looking to hire um, developers, they want to see almost your portfolio. What have you accomplished? Um, what are you, what are you going to be, um, what are you going to be working on? Is there something similar that they can see that you've proven that you've done some work either in the open source community or some other company, some project that you've worked on that's um, that's impressive, that's something um, 
that they can point to and say, yes, I'm going to hire Jeff. I'm going to hire Brad because they accomplished this. And um, I think that's something you can definitely hang your hat on. And it helps with the interview process. So, uh, Brad, what I would suggest is um, start writing some code, any code. Start a GitHub repository and find that hobby project. That's something that that interests you, right? You may already be doing this as part of your learning with Code Academy. Write some code, commit it, make it public so that folks can see it. That way, when you do go for an interview, when you do want to show some folks, you can point them and say, well, yeah, I haven't you know, worked for a company before, but I am working on a little project on my own. You can see some of the code that I've written over here, and they can also see a little bit about your um, how you interact with source control to see if you're a, a good team member. Blue TVI, thanks so much for the follow. Uh, Blue Beanie, um, no, I'm not going to TwitchCon for that. I'm going to actually meet with Twitch. I'm, I'm, I'm doing some heavy negotiations. Heavy negotiations. Oh my. Yes, George. And um, we're we're gonna we're gonna plan some cool new things for developers. Um, we're gonna learn a little bit about extension development from the folks at Twitch. We're we're gonna learn how to grow this stream here a little bit. I think it'll be a good time. Even Brave Cobra makes a good point. Brad, even getting a P, a, a pull request accepted into CoreWiki shows that hey, you contributed to part of a team. You worked with with some code that was even reviewed here on a show. Um, and it, it shows that you're you're learning, right? And that's one thing that we as developers have to be mindful of. We're always learning. And I'm about to learn why is this thing failing? Um, let's click edit here and dig into our task just to make sure what's going on here. You know what, even, even better than clicking into the tasks, Let's look at the build and let's see what version of the SDK it's using. Because it should tell us which version up top. Uh, 21410. Now, the version that Dan has us using. See, look at that. Now I'm getting the. Mm, Uh, obj bin two one four oh three. Well, that doesn't look like the right version. And where's our SDK version that we're using here? Um, right, because I want I want to see that version reported somewhere. I don't see it. So there's the NPM install. That's fine. Let me kick this back off. All right. Um, right, so this is doing the restore. Yeah, SDK 21402. Right, we were looking for... 21403. So we're not on the right version, even though we demanded the 403. I wish I followed someone who did front end development, JavaScript, SAS. Um, we do a little bit of that here. We're going to do a little bit, not just JavaScript. Um, let's see here. So even though we, we requested a newer version of the SDK, we got an older version. Could be that 403 hasn't been deployed on the build server. Um, oh, look at this. It looks like Firefox is taking a powder on me. Let's uh, let's see here. Initialize job. Current agent, agent version. No. Doesn't tell me anything. No. Hmm. Interesting. All right, if I click into edit here. Um, <laughs> can I look at the agent? Here we go. I don't want any parallelism. Run this job. This is just... 
uh, where is it? Hosted 20 VS 2017. I have a feeling that there's our issue. And if that agent hasn't been updated with the latest version of the SDK, that could be why. I would, is there a way for me to get information about what's on that version? Hmm. Uh, you can use the .NET Core tool installer to task to ensure it's there. Hey, there's Oren. Good morning. So there is a task to ensure it's the right version. So let's see if we can just add that task. Oh, .NET Core installer. Gee, go figure. Let's add that. Use .NET Core SDK. No, not 104. Bad idea. It was 2.1. Uh, what was the version number? It's way up here. 403, right? 21403. There we go. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay. If I move that to the top, let's see if that works. Save in queue. Um, now forcing the installation of the 21403. Now this also means I'm going to have to, um, yeah, good, I'm glad it was saved. I'm also gonna have to manage the state of this when we change SDK version. So we're gonna have to keep that in mind. Um, pool information shows what's on the agent uh, here all right docker docker compose visual studio 2017 enterprise .NET 472 I'm looking for .NET core versions that's not it Azure Azure CLI go Ruby selenium selenium .NET core yeah, it's only got up to 402. So this should force the right version of the SDK to be installed. Um, let's go over to our builds, see if we can check out that latest build. Do, 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 do. Um, works great. I created that issue about the async methods. Let me know if you need more information. Fantastic, thank you. Only if we use the latest version that hasn't been deployed yet. Right, this is... This is something that we, we need to do only because we got bumped out to that latest version because of the security patch. All right, let's let that ride for a little bit. Um, so going back and talking about first start. So we're building this first start page and we have this entry here for name your wiki. We don't have support for that yet. So I'm going to comment that out just to simplify what we're trying to deliver right now. The administrator username, the password, the database, a connection string, and submit. Now what I'd like to do, I'd like to make SQLite the default. And, oh, thank you for the compliment there, Sushinator, yeah. Um, custom made, custom, and it's embroidered, it's not printed, right? That's actually, let me zoom in a little bit here. Right, check this out. There we go. That's actually actually stitching. Right, let me see. Let's get a little closer. Right, you can see. Right. That's there's other places that actually do a screen printing on hats, and it's it, it it's it's kind of cheesy. And I, I had one printed with with the works on my machine logo. Right, with this thing. And it's it's white. It looks okay, but. This looks oh, so much better. Um, all right, so I've commented that out. I'd really like SQLite to kind of be the default database option, which means that I have kind of a, a default connection string. Um, and um, I want to put almost a watermark in there, right? Placeholder is just the word connection string. Um, I, I, leave blank for default. Keep it going. 
Hey, Space Shot TV, thank you so much for subscribing with your Twitch Prime. Ten months in a row. Very cool stuff. Thank you so much. Yes, we will make a donation to Girl Develop It for that. Very, very cool stuff. Um, okay, so when this is saved, what we started doing, the action we started doing to, to kind of put down a configuration setting somewhere. Um, hi, Space Shot. Good to see you. Hello. Wow. Look who's back. Um, yeah, Chris is here. And then? We're going to write some more code. And then? We'll get it saving the data properly into our new configuration file. Right? We started writing uh, app settings.app.json that'll have our appropriate application configuration in it. So that um, it has, that's where we'll put our database configuration and those other things that we want to configure at startup. And then? That's enough with the end thens. Um, it, it was a fun gag the, in the first few minutes. And I know I'm going to get YouTube complaints about it because folks on YouTube are already annoyed that there's music playing and that there's people that get things that pop up here and Steve wanders by and I'm looking at you YouTube anyways um, all right so my first start configuration the things that I want to read and save here so besides wiki name and admin username um, where'd it go bring up that index thank you and the first start configuration there it is um, let's put these side by side so that I can, there it is. So we can put the appropriate messages back and forth here. Welcome YouTubers. We love you. We do love YouTube, but I know there's a couple of you out there that are going to vote this video down. And you're going to tell me, you know what, Jeff, why do you have to have music playing in the background? I find that so distracting. And that probably triggered you to do. And that's okay. <laughs> um, admin username. I don't want to have the admin password saved out here. But having admin username I think is okay to write into our configuration. Hey, James Reeves, 1989. Thanks so much for following. Even though I'm slurping my coffee. Um, but you know, I do need to receive that password. <laughs> no, Brave Cobra, you're not evil. You just encourage me to get crap done. Um, I should have a property for it if this is kind of the view model for the stuff being saved back. Um, so let's have public string admin password. And we'll have a get and set on that because it's a property, right? A C sharp property has automatically has get and set. Um, parameters derived on it so that it autom we can get the password and we can set the password. Um, I also need to get the input database. So let's public string input database so that I can receive that information. Get set. And the connection string. Um, it's just called connection string. All right. So public. You know what? Let's use the... Uh, there we go. Let me do that again. There's a snippet that's built into Visual Studio and Visual Studio code called prop. And if I tab, it'll automatically complete and give me that auto property. So string, connection, string. Save that. Don't use local accounts here. Use Azure Active Directory. And we'll come back to that. I've got a whole list of things that we want to do with Azure plugins. And uh, we'll absolutely come back and talk about Azure Active Directory, Azure Search, Azure Storage, Azure Cosmos DB. But I want to make sure that we have something that works everywhere. Rename input database to just database. Well, so, you know what, that's fine. I can live with that. Which means that here, that 
So connection string, good. Now, why did the build fail this time? Did we get the appropriate version? Install 21403. Cache does not contain that particular .NET Core. will be downloaded and installed. Getting URL to download 21403. Cached this installed tool. Cache tool DNCS 21403. So it sure looks like it. Use .NET Core 21403. All right. .NET Core. There's ASP.NET Core. It's on the 21403 SDK now. Better. Okay, there's my NPM install to go get any of those other files that I needed. Yep, there's the warning that we had earlier. Nope, it's that same error. Razor Tag Helper, this is what's being included in the SDK now. It's been moved. And we should be getting... <laughs> we should be getting the implicit version of the ASP.NET Core app package, which I have a feeling this is getting a different version. So I'm going to look at the restore in here. Now cut that out. So this is the restore task. And if I scroll down to, oh, I see all kinds of property reassignments. That's fine. Here we go. Pulling that out of API v3 flat container. Oh, you dog, you. Still more property reassignments. Show me the installs. And of course, I can't do a find in here. There it was. Can I do it? Um, I'm looking for ASP. That's not ASP net. Dot app. Nope. It pulled down the wrong version. I'm pulling down the implicit version and it pulled down 211. So I can't implicitly pull down the ASP.NET Core version because the version that it pulled down is 211. I don't think we have it explicitly referenced. That's one of the things that Dan removed. Microsoft ASP.NET Core app. It's referenced in one place in Core Wiki CS Proj. And it is an implicit install. And DevOps is pulling down the wrong version. That's a pain in the keister, isn't it? Uh, no, Dan didn't break it. The version that's cached and that's available on Azure DevOps is not the same version. The version that I want, if I go back over here and we look at the terminal, um, when you see it do the install, it's, I believe it does 215. It, it grabs the latest version. All right, let's stop this. Um, let's get rid of my bin and obj folders again. 
Isn't there a no cash on this? Yeah. So I want to force it to go out there. Um, Brave Cobra, I would agree that CICD for like a nightly should do a clean build. The interim builds, they should be able to build on each other to a certain extent. And when it sees a new version, go grab those new things, new versions referenced in dependencies. Grab those new things and start using those. Um, it's not going to show me the version here. Um, it is in the obj folder. I hate that I have to spend time looking at this. I really, really do. Um, ASP.netcore.app. So it wants to go from 211 up as high as 220, but I don't want the 211 because the 211 has the issue in it. It's and look, it's saying it just wants greater than 211, so it's just on DevOps, it's grabbing the 211 version. Here locally. Right, so that's how it resolved everything is what's in that project assets JSON. Um, I believe it's in the targets file. Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, ASP.NET core.app. Yeah, it's not in there. Um, but you see, I'm pulling in the 211 versions here locally. Hmm. Did you check uh, .NET outdated to see if something is pinning to 211? Let's give that a shot. .NET outdated. Waiting, waiting. So it should actually be pushing to two one three. Right? Even these are well, Entity Framework Core SQLite, we can push that up if we'd like. Go ahead, do it. Upgrade everything. Uh, did you mer merge dev to first start? Yes, I did. Yep. And here we go. Nice. I like seeing that things have been updated successfully. And... Managing, managing this meta content, I find annoying and something trivial that this is why I didn't want to update in the first place, right? And this is what makes people say, I don't want to manage and do these things because you end up getting it rat holed. Now I've spent time chasing this 
instead of working. So, and I'm not doing anything exotic here, right? This should just easily update. Um, so if I .NET run, this should run properly. Binary Chef Ubuntu plus one. Yes, yes. Chasing packages is extremely frustrating. I have maybe one or two scoops of my fruit punch G Fuel left and I'm, I'm gonna be sad when I'm out of it. Um, there are a lot of people who have to go from 2.0 to 2.1 also, yes. Miguel asks, what do you think about Linux Mint? It's another distro, it's nice. It takes a little bit more maintenance to put together and I don't wanna spend time spending my valuable time doing operating system maintenance. Let somebody else figure that out for me. I, that's not something that, that I consider a hobby. It's not something that I want to spend my time on. So other folks that like to do more of the hands-on stuff um, on in their operating system, maintaining it, good for you. That's great. You have that choice. That's not something that I'm, in, I'm particularly, particularly interested in. There we go. Easy for me to say. Um, you know, I'm not going to deal with this, this build failure right now. That's, th this is something that is, uh, I, it's, it works on my machine. There is something clearly not working properly here. It is using the proper version of the SDK now. Um, I, I don't have time to rat hole on this. I, I just, I don't. And if it means that I'm not using DevOps for a while, oh well. I My time's too valuable to spend chasing mysterious build failures. Um, okay, so I have my first configuration. This is lined up so that it, it looks like what's inside of my index. So it should give me those same values coming back. Works on my machine seal of approval. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Give me one second. Where'd it go? Here, there. There you go. Works on my machine, ship it. Um, maybe you should contact the DevOps guys after the stream. This is not the correct advertising for them. Oh, you better believe it. Um, it, between them and the ASP.NET folks, changing the version of my SDK and the version of my, um, the version of the versions of my references should not colossally, should not break my build. Um, you should be able to get the correct versions and install them. What I'm most concerned about and what I'm skeptical, skept, what I'm skeptical about is that chalupa right there. There's also this one here that's pinning to 212. Even if I write, that's the latest, right? Um, you know, I have the latest everything here and it's not working. So, yes, I do have my own. I have it on cards and mugs and things. Um, the main problem I have with Azure DevOps is that only read the Azure Pipeline's YAML of the master branch instead of reading the one of the branch it is building. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, good point. So, um, yeah, I don't have time to rat hole on that. This works properly here. 
Somebody else will figure it out. So, um, so my first start configuration, when that gets posted back, so I need to set up a post here. Um, that's my extensions, so I need here. So here's the page. Um, right now I was just testing writing a file to disk, which writes app settings app.json. This will contain these types of initial configuration settings that we want to write. Um, so on get right now, I don't actually want it to do this. I'm actually, you know what, let's just yank that for now. Um, and that's fine, right? I can have an on get there that doesn't do anything. Hey, Kane, the game one. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Now nah, I'll leave it with some space there. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to remove this comment. And I'm going to start writing a post method. Um, right, is it void? So when you post back, right, when you post to a Razor page like this one, you handle the on post method and you can receive in whatever content was posted, interact with it, and um, continue resume processing. Now, I think I actually want to return an I action result. I'm blanking here on what should be coming back on that on post. Yeah. I action result is what I want to be receiving and working with. Um, let's do that. I'm gonna steal this. I'm gonna and uh, paste it right there. So we're returning an I action result, and we'll call this on post async because I'm going to write this app settings app JSON file to disk. Um, this method lacks a wait. Yeah, I haven't written it yet. You turkey. All right. So now um, I've received the admin, the password, and write this first start configuration. Let's open that back up. Um, I don't care about wiki name, but the admin username and the admin password these should be required. So I'm going to decorate these appropriately. There we go. And I'll control dot to get my appropriate using statement. And actually all of these files, these fields should be required. And even then I still need to do a little bit of validation on the backside. So that will save, um, let me, I'm going to grab the, there it is, model state is valid information. Let's grab this. If there's a problem with the content that was posted back, let's throw some sort of an error here. Um, let's also, for the password, set a min length of six. Six is good. So it's not just, you know, a three character password. All right. So that'll be enforced as well. So when I do have that information, hmm. Hey, Kasukin. when I do have that information, um, right now I have two databases. Am I gonna put these in one database now? What do you think? Hmm, hmm, <laughs> Do if I, Because right now, if I go back to the user interface, I have my user administrator user, my administrator password. If I continue to, to save that in a SQLite database locally for the administration. Yeah, let's just keep doing that for right now. We'll enhance this later. I want to get the feature done, right? It, perfect is the enemy of getting it done. Um, 
So <clears throat> let's write this into our administrator, into our, our security database that we have for right now. And let's set up our database and connection string for our content to possibly go somewhere else. Yes, we are working on the first start features. Um, wow. They're going to be very impressive. All right. Um, so what I'll need to receive, I'll need to receive into my first start capabilities here, the information about my... Uh, not any, um, <laughs> not, uh, it's not my policies, right? I'll need to receive information about the, the user manager and right. Here's my identity hosting core wiki user, which is where core wiki data entity framework security. So I should be able to receive and work with that. Okay. Um, but I should be able to receive in an iUser manager for CoreWiki user. Right, because it, it, I'm, I wanna make sure, I'm checking to make sure I don't have a circular reference. CoreWiki user is down here in my data project, which is okay for my first start project to reference. So let's go down into here. I have iHosting environment, iConfiguration config, and I'm receiving first start configuration, which I don't think I need to receive. I'm gonna get rid of this for right now. Because I'm using this as a um, as a view model, so I don't really need that. But I could say equals new first start configuration, so that I have that that view model sitting there waiting for me. Now let's see if I can receive an what is it? I user manager of type core wiki user. All right, let's see if I can get this. No. Hmm. All right. Can I at least get core wiki user? All right. Hmm. All right. Um, user manager, I'm nearly positive, right? I user manager is something that we can fetch. I user manager. No, no. Um, two fifteen. All right. Look at this. Back in twenty fourteen, closed. Yeah, was it merged? Add user manager should register T user manager as a service. So I should be able to say user manager. Okay, it's not the interface. I should be able to just go user manager like that. Nope, doesn't see the identity there. Let's come down here and that's latest. We're okay on that. All right. Package reference include uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity version equals three. I'm just guessing at a version number here to see if it'll pick it up. Um, so if I go back over to this, am I able to find user manager? Nope. Hmm. Uh, let's see, user manager, ASP.NET Core. Let's see if we can find out where that is. Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity. Yeah, that's what I 
thought. All right, so if I put, I was hoping I wouldn't have to do this by hand. Not ident, not identity. All right, now it's Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity. Yeah, that's the latest. Woohoo! All right. Um, so I should. Right, user manager. I also want to receive role manager. Right, I need the. All right, we'll, uh, da -da 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 -da. it's in like seed data. Right. There's a method called seed data that actually does the create of the users. Database migrate. CoreWiki identity context, which should be made available to me. No, I don't. There. <laughs> I'm receiving user manager, core wiki user, and role manager identity role. All right. So role manager identity role. Now, I have a feeling... Right, if I do a .NET restore here, is it going to give me those capabilities, load them up for me here? All right, better. Mm, it knows what that is. It doesn't know what identity role is. Why doesn't it know what identity role is? Um, I'm going to reload the window. Maybe it'll get that when everything resets here. Yes. All right, so now let me save off a copy of the user manager and the role manager. So let's say this dot user manager equals user manager. This dot role manager equals the role manager. Now I need these two so that when that information about the admin is submitted, I can go and create the admin in the database. Oh, you dog, you. Well, it doesn't know what core wiki user is because that's in core wiki dot data. So let's add a reference to core wiki dot data. And that's gonna be done the exact same way it's done inside of our main project. So I'm gonna steal some code again um, because it's ugh, down here, down here. This one, something like that is what I need inside of my first start. Let's just paste it in and we'll clean it up. Um, that's the one I need. And I have an extra item group, get rid of that. Good. So now I need these properties. Uh, sh hey, hey, generate read only property, and I'll generate that as a read only property. If I control dot on this, there we go. There's my using statement. Now, why is an identity role being found? Right, that's somewhere Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity identity role claim I don't want identity role claim I just want identity role which is in Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity hmm. and I put that up here why you no find 
Why can't you find it? That feels weird. Um, core wiki first start dot net build. Prove it to me you can't find it, right? Right chat room? Oh, it can't find it. Dot net restore first. That'll do it, right? Oh, crap. Uh, core wiki user could not be found. Well, that's not the error that I was getting inside of Visual Studio Code. Ha <laughs> ha. Um. Where's core wiki user? Ugh. Core wiki data entity framework security. Yeah, that looks right. Um, I know what you're referencing there, Firebrim. Cool, Nick. All right, that's. That's pretty cool. Um, but the default implementation of identity role, which uses string as the primary key, is just identity role. So I, I saw where you're going there, and I kind of agree. But we're just using the default implementation. Um, all right, is it because I didn't save this file? Is, is, is that what? Is it just Jeff didn't save the file, so we're getting grumpy? There we go, that's what it was. All right. So now if I go back to Visual Studio Code. Okay, all my red lines are gone now. Hmm. I see how this works. All right, so to finish this thought, I should be able, at the conclusion of the post, if everything is valid, I should be able to use User Manager and Role Manager to save my new admin, right? And I don't need this right now. Um, core wiki, I don't need that right now. Now, where was it? Right, it was admin at core wiki. And when it's writing that, <clears throat> it checks to see if the administrator role exists. So we're going to end up removing the administrator role I'm okay with. The admin user, this one, This is the piece right here that we're going to be moving effectively. Um, and I should be able to, I'm just gonna comment. Hey. I'm gonna comment this out. Yeah. Because I don't care about that. Because we're going to do it right here. Um, and I don't need to check if default admin user exists because we're creating him. Him? Them. We're creating them. Your admin might be a lady. Might be... I don't want to assume a gender. Um, so let's call this new admin user. Um, username? Oh, we need an email to go with it too, don't we? Hmm. All right. So let's create another field. Let's call this admin email. Isn't there an email? Yeah. I want it to be an email address. And this attribute will actually verify that that's an email address. VS Code was trolling me. And you blew it! And I blew it. Who knew? Um, what time do we got? What time do we got? All right. I think we're going to get this done. This is going to be quick. Um, back to my files. I need to add the admin email field to the screen. So I have admin username. I need to also put their email address. Input admin. Oh, well, that's... Hmm, this should be 
admin username. Label for admin email. Change that. Administrator email address. Enter admin email address. And I don't need a little tooltip there. We will need some validator information here, but I'll come back to that. Okay, uh, new admin user. So I should now be receiving into here admin email. So username is going to be uh, right this dot configuration dot password twice. Yeah, we could do that too. You're right. Um, shoot, not this configuration. First start to first start config. We should do that. Let me let's get the feature working, and then we'll we'll plug that in. First start config admin email, and uh, let's see if we can break any other good security practices and anger our friend Barry Dorans, because I know he's not watching. Nope, he's not in the chat room, so it's okay. We don't have to worry about angering Barry. Um, I kid. Um, Barry is an amazing security analyst for us on the .NET team. Um, we really appreciate the some of the painstaking work that he goes through. Um, yes, I am complimenting Barry Dorns. Sorry. Um, user manager, add role to a to add to role async, uh, and this is going to be new admin user, and the role that we're adding them to. There could be other folks that might get angered, and then, wait, wait, there might be other folks that get angered, and then, and then we'll have to address their concerns. And then, we'll write code that appropriately fixes it. But we're we're trying to get the feature done. That's what's important. And then, we'll we'll tie it down. We'll make it more secure. We'll ratchet that up. And then, and it'll be a lot better. And then, everybody will be happy. Okay. It is. I am too easy to trigger on that. Every time you trust user input without verification, Barry hears it. Yes, he does. And you know what he hears? Right. That's what he hears. Um, all right. User manager. So I need to get the user role. The user, the administrator role is, uh, da -da -da -da. it's called administrators. And I do have to kind of go through the, the text for it there. So, uh, var administrator's role equals role manager get role. Yeah. And I give it the name, not the identity role. Serial Smile, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, no, I want to get... I want to get the role. Find by name. There we go. And I'll, uh, I thought I had quotes already. So I'll put no wait in front of that. And now I have administrator's role is a, yep, is an identity role. Now why is, no, it wanted a string. Son of a gun. I went through all that and it's just this. If you mix HTTP and HTTPS content, he hears it. Uh, there's a... There's a... Um, wait a sec, what just happened? Okay. I can't talk about that. Um... Your unit test would have caught that, right? Uh, no. And there's the Frit Fritzbot answering. That should be 0% certainty on that match. Um, 
No, this should, this, this is an integral, we should write a unit test around this that it does properly create the user on this. Mixing HTTP and HTTPS content, I think there's, I think there's very much a, um, an integration test that we need to start thinking about. Did I miss the big announcement? No, no. No, we've got about 15, 20 minutes. Um, you're still in good shape. Um, all right, so if it completed all of, the, all of this properly, I want to redirect to the home page, right? So let's uh, re return, redirect, redirect to page. I don't want it to be a permanent. And we're going to redirect to... Um, <laughs> slash details I don't need any route values I just want to redirect to page yeah slash details and it'll go to the default home page so actually if I give it uh, slug equals home dash page it should route appropriately I need to put a new in front of that there we go that should work, right? Uh, the hat will be the all the new all your base meme of the stream. Uh, my hat is so big it needs its own announcement. Uh, no, that's not it. Um, okay, so I've created the user and I've written it. The other things as far as the database configuration, we should write that file to disk. Let me come back to that. Let's test to make sure that this bit with creating our new default user works. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Which means, and if you override service point manager's server certificate validation callback to just return true, Barry will hunt you down <laughs> and he will delete. But what I do have. Barry does have are a very particular set of skills. Very particular skills set of skills I've acquired over a very long career. Oh yes. Anyways, um, so now that I have this, what I should do is I should in my um, <laughs> not in the CS proj in the startup extensions. I should look in the security database and see if you do have. Oh, it is on the soundboard. Absolutely. I, I should check to see if you have an administrator. And if you don't have an administrator, then return first start is incomplete. Um, so is first start incomplete? This gets called here in the use first start configuration. So we have the information to start inspecting here, right? Map when context request path starts with segments first start. Map app, map app dot run. Request redirect. Okay, hang on. Use when is first start incomplete. Then it, right, so it's doing this test here. Right, and it's passing in the HTTP context. Oh, and the dog's upset. I have a feeling it's the UPS folks. Let's think. Let's think. Yep, the doggy emote. Look at that. Um, because she loves to hate the UPS folks. All right. Think this through, Jeff. First start, start incomplete, we want to check if an administrator is in it. Well, what else can we do that's faster than checking the database? I don't want to have to, on every request, check the database to see if first start is complete. Hmm. Think, 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 think. What if we did this? What if we put in memory just a Boolean flag that says first start is incomplete. Right? If we do this, private static bool first start incomplete. 
and we and we default it to true. Right, so the existence of that extra config, we want to check, but down here, what I can do is I can I can short circuit, right? Uh, if first step incomplete, if not first step incomplete, return false. So immediately, boom, we're done, right? Otherwise, check the existence of that file. Um, still waiting for the Surface Go. Do you have any more information on... Ah, uh, the neighbor started barking. The neighbor's dog started barking. Uh, do you have any more information on the tracking on that, Janesco? Um, okay. So first start, if so I want to check for that extra configuration file. Does it exist on disk? And it's this file name right here, and it's gonna be at the environment content root path. Um, I feel like this should be sitting somewhere as like a read-only content constant. Yes, my neighbors like to bark. Hang on, did I did I put it down here? <gasps> I didn't put it down here. Wait a sec. I didn't. I thought I had it. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, my my neighbors like to bark. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, friends, you th what do you think about multiple returns in one method versus one return? What's your practice? There's there's something to be said for the fast for the short circuit, um, and what that means for your application. Um, I need to receive the I hosting environment i hosting environment hosting environment now that's going to break some things that's okay um but we're gonna say uh app configuration file name equals we're gonna need to put that in there Control dot, give me a path. Hosting environment, there we go. And now I can create this file. Generate, yep. Public static string, good. All right, so now I have that. It doesn't know what this is. Let's put the using statement, good. DD Walsh. There you go. It is a little bit of nesting. However, it'll run a little bit faster because it's just checking an in-memory flag and exiting quickly um, versus trying to make it a little bit more complex, right? So if it thinks the first start is incomplete, I'm gonna check if that file exists on disk. Yeah, so um, if File dot exists, right? And it is application config start name, uh, file name. So actually I could just make this return first start incomplete. Or, uh, file does not exist right let's make sure we have that logic right if first start is incomplete right so the first time that we've installed this is true so true or the file does not exist so if the file does not exist this is true so this is true or true comes back 
I need to somewhere flip this so that we're not constantly checking if that file exists. Right, because right now, first start incomplete. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I want to make this internal. Now, you know what? Make it private. Yeah, let's do this. If first start incomplete, return true. Now, why is it giving me that there? Yeah, I know, I'm working on that. So I wanna flip it, flip it after you complete it, yeah. Is it worth it to grind sites like Leet Code just for the sake of job interviews in spite of that potentially making months? I've done that as well. Why not put this behind a lazy bool? You know what, I've never used lazy bools. Let's, let's talk about that. That's a good point. Initializes a new instance of lazy T. When lazy initialization occurs, default constructor of the target type is used. So if we say new lazy bool, then it'll go through and figure out. So we can say if the file exists. But then I still need to flip it. Right? So I'll need to reevaluate it. Am I right, Drew Boy? Help me out here. Right? If I'm if I make this a lazy bull. Right, I can say first start incomplete equals Dow. new lazy bool. Right, and don't I have to give it an initialization? Yeah. So if I did and just returned. Right now, can I convert lambda to bool because it is not a delegate type? Wait a sec. Right, it's a funk that returns a bool. Yeah. Why doesn't it like that? Right, if I made this return, that's yeah, that's stupid. It, I should be able to just do that, right? Uh, no, it takes the first value produced and holds onto it forever. Right, so I still need to flip it. Turkey. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that's what I want. Um, but I still need to, when the file does exist... Um, <laughs> no, I want to put, hang on, I want to put it there, but then I'm in, I'm, I think we want to put this like that, so it's defined. Return, first start incomplete. Then 
but it still needs to be flipped when it's been written. All right, I am going to check something. Nope, not yet. Okay. Uh, you're heading in the wrong direction. You want to initialize the static to a lazy bool that posts to your delegate. Yeah. All right. So I have that changed, but I need to flip it. I need to reset it after the file is created. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, so how do I force it to reset? So it'll initialize the first time that it's create that it's requested. I want to reset it. I want to recalculate it. How do I force it to to recalculate? No. Recalculate, or do I just put a new one in there? Reinitialize a lazy. Well, that's Swift. No, that. I want to reinitialize on C sharp. No. Mm, lazy variable with a reset. Oh, that's Kotlin. Ugh. Assign it a new. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I... Hmm. Yep, there's my reminder. Let's see. I'm looking here. No, that's not it. There was supposed to be a bunch of tweets and things that went out, and I don't see them just yet. I'm going to hold for just a little bit. The delegate provides the value. You effectively provide the factory method that does some, the one-time work, and lazy will provide the one-time execution characteristics around it. Right. So I'm going to create an internal static void reset first start bool new value. This feels stupid. And I'm just going to say first start incomplete equals new lazy bool new value. So it forces that reset. Yeah, I'm just checking in to make sure that folks did make the announcement. Because I'm, I'm trying to coordinate with a couple other folks. I don't see it yet. Let me see if... Let me see if it did properly go out. see the messages yet. I'm going to hold off for just a couple minutes here. Lazy is not meant to be reinitialized. Clearly it's the wrong tool. I kind of agree. It. I don't think it does. Uh... 
Um, I'm gonna change this back to just a bull. I think. And I can, I mean, crumbs, I can just remove this. First time through, we should initialize it, but I need... Yeah. So first start incomplete. First start incomplete is true, so come down here. Um, if first start incomplete... and the file doesn't exist, then it's gonna check it every time while it's not. Um, and you know what, for the first time, when you are in first startup, I think we're okay. So if it is false, if first start, false start is not incomplete, if it has completed, it won't even hit the file exists. If it is incomplete, it'll check if the file exists, which is okay in that first start mode. And then it, if it does not exist, it'll drop down and return that. But if the first start is incomplete and the file does exist, this is false. Then what I'll do, right, is I'll flip first start incomplete equals false and then return false. think that got it right there all right so now I don't need reset first start because it'll just do it for me um, yeah I think we're good there all right so my index when it's when it's done Right, so we're gonna create the user and then I need to write the file to disk that says, here's the database, here's the database provider. I don't see my announcements. Something was supposed to be published today and I don't see it. There we go. Okay. Here we go. We're gonna take a break because I have, I, I get to share this announcement with you. I am thrilled. Ad I was announcing all weekend? No. I am thrilled to be able to share with you. Microsoft Connect is back. December 4, 2018, we will have a Connect event. And it's called Build the Apps of Tomorrow Today. There's something for every developer. I'm going to paste that link into the chat room for you. <laughs> um, there's all kinds of information. You can sign up to get event updates. The agenda. There'll be a keynote from 8.30 to 10 a.m. Pacific time. 
And then there'll be a short break for about a half an hour, and then there'll be a second keynote. First keynote is with Scott Guthrie. Second keynote with our friend Scott Hanselman. And then, there it is, friends. There will be six hours of live coding sessions right here on Twitch, hosted by guess who? This is going to be the first time that you're going to see a Microsoft vice president live coding and answering questions on stream. Okay? Who? The guy right there behind me. And uh, so there will be on-demand sessions available. But this will be taking place live. Let me see. Is it under back behind here? Did they put it here? It'll be a virtual event for the most part. You get, you'll be able to watch it here on Twitch, over on Mixer, over on Channel 9, at this website for the Connect event. I don't see... It's It doesn't say it here. But this will be taking place live from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas as part of Dev Intersection. The first day keynotes for Dev Intersection are the Microsoft Connect keynotes. Um, so if you are on the fence about going to that event, you got a really good reason to go. If you're really interested to see all the latest stuff about what's going on, what we're going to be announcing, you can tune in live here if you're not going to be able to make it to Las Vegas. If you want to participate, just like we do Every, every time we get together here on my stream, there will be live coding sessions. We're putting those sessions together. It's going to be about 40 minutes with each one of our guests. Um, and we are requesting some of these folks that you see here join us. And it will be amazing. Okay. Does Scott Goo wear any other color other than red? It's kind of his signature when he presents and speaks. So um, I hope... I hope you're looking forward to this. I hope you, this is something that you're excited about. It is only one day um, because we want to focus. We want to get you the content you need as fast as possible. Um, so there will be on-demand sessions. We'll have our live coding here. You'll have two keynotes. If you want to see a little bit more in depth and you want to ask these folks a question in person, you're invited. Check out devintersection.com. That's where these folks will be, that you can join them. So if you have, if you're still working on your training budget, you have some cash left over through the end of the year, check it out, devintersection.com, and there'll be AI content, dev content, SQL content, SharePoint content, and you'll be able to find out more about Connect at that event. All right? Big, big announcement. Um, I don't know who this guy is with the hair. Uh, I don't I don't know who he is. One day I'll go to a big conference like that. Got to up my game first. Um, it's it can be expensive, and it's it is a premium type of event, and that's why we want to make sure that it's accessible to everybody by streaming that content. Where did they get that picture from? That's an old picture, man. Uh, seriously, that's like, that picture is almost 10 years old now. Scott Goo can go invisible when wearing other color shirts. <laughs> so there you go. Connect. <clears throat> Coming soon. Um, brand new. Tell your friends, tell your families, tell your pets. We're going to have a great time with Microsoft Connect. There you go. Oren's already sharing it out there. So December 4, live from Las Vegas. Um, I speak at a lot of regional events now. We act, Oh, oh, very cool. Next year I have some bigger plans. Let me know. There's always opportunities to get folks into speaking at bigger shows and uh, participating um, in, those, in those other events. So... For our first start project here, I actually have a hard stop in about five minutes. The last things that we needed to do was we needed to write that file to disk. So let's actually put this together here. Let's grab this 
and let's change this to, let's call this write config file to disk. Let me finish playing a little bit of music here for us. Uh, back to music to code by. So there's my app settings app JSON. We're going to create that file. We're going to, if the file does exist. Yeah. All right. So it, all it does is it writes just an empty string at this point. We should, and then it rewrites it. That's fine. So let's write in some initial configuration here. Um, we're going to want to write in the database provider. And I don't know what these settings are. We'll actually wire them up appropriately. Um, let's <clears throat> receive some parameter called provider. JSON file, let's call this connection string equals connection string. We'll figure out where to pull that from. Uh, <laughs> so string provider, string connection string, and we will receive those values right here, right? Config file to disk. This dot first start config database. This dot first start config connection string. There we go. Added the second keynote to my calendar. I haven't used Azure DevOps at all. Hey, that's fine. Um, so that should do it. That should write that configuration file. That should create it. That should give us the ability now to actually put the contents in it that we want for the provider and the connection string, and then appropriately start rerouting and not being in first start mode. So first start mode checks for the presence of this file, which right now just has foo and bar in it. So I'm gonna delete that file. Go back to my terminal and let's see if we can get this working. .NET launch run, and we should see this run. Maybe group them together in a class and just pass a new instance of that class. That's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. But this should give us the conclusion of this capability. And of course, right, we're asking for an, a locally created user for this. Oren's right. We may want to specify a provider and appropriately pull those in. Um, what do we got here? There's no argument given that corresponds to the formal parameter configuration. Ah, the use first start configuration. This was, right, when I modified my startup extension for use first start configuration, I need to pass in that... Right, not just the configuration, but the hosting environment and the configuration. So uh, these are backwards now. Let's take that out, put it over here. Right, that should be I hosting environment. Yeah, I hosting environment configuration. That should work. Rebuild, do, 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 watch. Nope, doesn't like it. Can I convert from iHosting environment to iHosting environment? That's a pain in the neck. Microsoft ASP Net Core hosting, iHosting, oh, Microsoft extensions hosting. You're kidding, right? Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. If I change this to ASP.NET, that should still work. You've been fighting with Array and the showing it in it during Azure Functions. Ew. Here we go. Looks like we're getting there. No. Configuration file app settings app JSON was not found and is not optional. That is in program line 21. That's fine. It is optional when we don't have it. 
There it is. Add JSON file. Optional. True. We should see that. Rebuild and run. Come on. We're, we're getting down to the wire here. Come on. There it goes. If I go back over here, localhost 8081, and I refresh that, it still wants a first start configuration in index model. Well, we don't need to receive that anymore in the constructor. I thought we got rid of that. I didn't. Goodbye. Let's see that restart. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. It's almost there. Almost there. Better. Fantastic. All right, so if I leave that the way it is, let's actually, just to change this and give it something different. Jeff at corewiki.com. Jeff at corewiki. Password is... Hey, Mr. Regs. Thanks so much for the... Thanks so much for the uh, subscription. I'll match that. And we'll make a donation to Girl Develop It. Database, I'll just set that to SQLite. And I'll just make this my connection string. We're not actually using it yet. Submit. What didn't it like? Did it write the file? Did it write the file? App settings, I don't see it. All right. We're gonna need to figure this out, but I do have a hard stop. So I'm gonna pause this for right now. Go up one, run a git status. Oh yeah, look at all that. Almost done checking for and setting database configuration. Awesome. We are almost there. I will git push that <clears throat> so that if anybody wants to contribute, check in on it, take a look at it. I really appreciate that. But I will be back on, on what day? I'll be back on Tuesday next week because I'm going to TwitchCon this week. Um, so I will not be around. I'm going to send you over to our friend Mark Miller over on the Code Rushed channel. He's having a, a lot of fun working on some JavaScript right now, but I need to get over to a meeting that I'm actually a little bit late for. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We're almost there with our first configuration. Just a bug or two in there that needs to be fixed, and I think we'll have it set. If you want to take a shot, clean it up, you're welcome to. But uh, say hi to Mark for me. Drop him a couple C-sharp bots in the chat room, and I'll see you a week from today on Tuesday the day before Halloween in our undead coding stream. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you then.